if you don't have an ego, there would be nothing uh, for you to be courageous against or nothing for you to challenge, right? You could remove the a ego and it'd be the creation of a stable state. That's the problem. Likewise, you can have an ego seeking a stable state. So that's a problem, right? In order to have what I'll call the AB logic of a Hegel or, you know, where, which is reason versus understanding, you need a kind of contrast. You need difference. You need diversity in order to have unfolding, right? Like the reason why if you like a bookcase is parts and a whole and the holes are the parts and the parts of the whole and where do you locate it at? And there's a tension. There's a fundamental tension there where the parts are becoming the whole and the whole are becoming the parts and it's all circular in movement. It's this interrelation, interpenetration is the term you'll hear of Paggio or Verveke talk about in different things. So the bookcase is not actually stable. It's only stable in so much as you don't ask questions about it. Once you ask, well, where is the bookcase? Uh, it's in the glass and now it's the sympathesis, right? Like you take it apart and it falls apart. It's not stable anymore, right? So everything around you has the potential to not be stable if you question it. Uh, and so, you know, pluralism, globalism came along and now we question our beliefs so nothing is stable. But the temptation is then to return to stability in the form of nationality, closed-minded, to go back and regress. It's like, I want it stable again, so let me just get rid of the ego. Well, let me just say everyone's stupid but me. Let me just find my tribe. So there's a desire to go back to the stability. When the loss of stability is the invitation for the phenomenology of the artist. No, no, no. You've lost. Losing stability does not mean you're doomed. You now might be able to fly. You've been pushed out of the nest. Okay, let's go. And like global pluralism is basically being pushed out. You're being, give, humanity's giving the invitation to fly. Uh, but it's scary. So we'd rather go back to the nest. But if you go back to the nest, that's a problem. Uh, that's regressing, et cetera, so forth. So you push down, you've got to fly. Um, the only way to fly in this sense seems to be the coordination of many parts. Like you've said about wisdom with a bicycle. You know, wisdom is the taking of the many into the one. That is wisdom. And I think we could think of the four Ps of Verveki as wisdom would be the coordination of the four Ps, right? Of figuring out how to indeed do it. And that coordination is exactly the coordination of global pluralism. It is the coordination of the artistic act. It is the coordination of the phenomenon of the artist so that you get a creative product. So you get a relationship, so that you get a friendship, so that you get an emergence. Because in a conversation, you're coordinating the many to the one, right? Multiple people, mm -hmm. one topic, there's a coordinate. So basically every conversation that is dialogical is actually wisdom expressed. There is an expression of wisdom in that very dialogue, if it's taking on not the phenomenology of the business transaction, but the phenomenology of the artist. And if global pluralism is not going to kill us all, what would that be? A coordination of the many into the one, right? Like global pluralism would only succeed if it somehow manifests wisdom. And I think wisdom has to be some sort of coordination of the metaphysical, because if it wasn't, then it would just be a coordination of the physical. Now, metaphysical includes the physical, so I'm not saying it's abstraction, but it's like technical knowledge is not wisdom because it's just like how to put the engine together, right? Like technical mm. knowledge is just facticity. So if wisdom is distinct from technical knowledge, it has to be the coordinating of something that is not reducible to facticity, right? Well, then it's a coordination of relation. It's a coordination of the many into the one. It's a coordination of these... Abstract social forms that are arts, abstract social, abstract social arts, these coordination of things that people share that are invisible, like a relation. Where is the relation at? It's here. Where? Here, somehow, somewhere. And wisdom is a coordination of that thing that is very real. It would be ridiculous to say the relation is an illusion. And yet it would also be ridiculous to say the relation itself is the same as a cup. They are somehow different, right? And wisdom is the coordination of that metaphysical that metaphysics, that relation to make possible a harmony, to make possible the one. And I think killing the ego, well, if everyone kill the ego is what kind of is needed for difference in a way, like ego is what makes differentiation. The problem is when ego dominates. It's when ego, ego differentiates and then isolates. That's the problem. So you go ego differentiates and then it isolates or it's better than everyone else pride or different things, right? So so then you say, well, let's get rid of the ego. Well, if you do that, you don't have differentiation and you probably don't have relations very much uh, because you're a stable state and you have to make, so you go off and become a monk or a monastery and, and stuff like that. And that's a strategy, uh, but that's the isolationist strategy to the problem of global uh, pluralism, which a lot of people are doing. But 
um, that would not uh, be the proper address. Uh, that 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 would be that would be running from global pluralism more than facing it, in my opinion. Um, and so it becomes a question of how to deal with the metaphysicals, and that seems to be wisdom. That seems to be the artist, and that's you know another thing. Basically, I'm almost at the point of saying wisdom is friendship. Like when we say the love of wisdom, like wisdom is friendship because friendship versus like a legal contract marriage or an association, like friendship is like pure end in itself. Like, right? Like we say that all the time, like friendship is an end of itself. It's pointless. Of course it is because it's a situation. And so wisdom is the knowledge. Wisdom seems to be something like the knowing how to coordinate a friendship. It seems to be knowing how to coordinate relations knowing how to create spaces, to create situations. It's like, and if that's the case, then philosophy is the love of friendship. And philosophy is knowing how to be a friend and knowing how. And, and it certainly seems to be the case if we're talking about friends who are different. Like if we're talking friends, but the problem is like if it's friend, then it's just tribesmen. Like if you all share the worldview, you can like, you can be nice to one another. You can be friendly. But like, is it like this deep friendship? Um... That seems to require, let's put it this way, to the degree that the friendship is across difference, otherness, true otherness, which has something to do with love, then it's going to require more and more wisdom. And if it's going to require more and more wisdom, it's going to require more and more philosophy, which is the love of the skills that make possible friendship. And really, at the end of the day, uh, you know, global pluralism would need friendship, not law. Not, you know, the ability to see, like, people as an end in them, of themselves, right? Well, that would mean people, the, the thing is, I, you know, when we say that human, I'll give it back to you. When we say that humans are an end in themselves, then we're saying they're pointless. But you see, that language is too negative. That's why I keep saying situation. Like, if we say we do things because it's good to do pointless things, or Julian Benda will say that college exists to defend the useless things, like the humanities or literature or different things. The problem is that language is so negative that it's hard to associate it with virtue or to associate well, if you're like, well, if it's useless, when you're under the hegemony of utilitarianism and someone tells you that philosophy is useless, it's hard to then do it. But if I say to you that philosophy is useless because it's a situation, it's a way of being, it's actually high, it's pointless because it's higher than points. Friendship is pointless because it's higher than points. It is a situation and you must live in a situation because you are alive. So which one do you want to live in? You want to live in a quality situation or not? You know, well, I would like to be in a quality situation. Well, then you're going to do, you're going to need to do things that are situational then. That means they're pointless because they're situational. Well, now, okay, this is a positive language now. All right. So college exists for Julia Benda to teach people how to live in situations. That's why it's about, and situations are useless. You can't, you can't use a room for something like as a whole. You can't pick it up. A room is a space you enter in which usable things are situated. But the room itself is the condition of possibility for use and is not useful itself. Philosophy is the condition of possibilities in which useful things can be situated. But in of itself, it's not useful because it is what makes use possible. So it goes mm. with friendship. So it is goes with being a human being. And so it also then determines the type of use that matters to you. Like if friendship is the horizon of possibility according to which you define utility, then your idea of utility is very different from someone who doesn't have friendship as the means by which they define utility. Suddenly philosophy is very, this is the issue. Like people who do philosophy for friendship, they'll say philosophy is useful. Well, how? Because it is defining use within terms of friendship. Like it upgrades utility. This is the problem. Like without philosophy, friendship, people are stuck in a low resolution understanding of utility. They're stuck in a kind of low algebraic form of what is use. But when you start talking about situations, then things can be useful that make possible situations like art, like philosophy, like, like friendship. And basically, without that higher order understanding of utility, uh, which would get into like virtue ethic values and different things like that, there is no possibility, no possibility of creating a global pluralism that is able to ask questions about how do we belong together that is not reductionistic. Reductionistic. You need the situational thinking in order to create the situation in which those people can get along and exist to differ. And in fact, cherish difference. Not be afraid of it, but be glad for it. Because that very difference is why the friendship can be more generative. The very diversity 
is why it becomes more creative. Just like, like there's creativity as a result very often of a kind of tension. There are these different things the artist is holding together to then generate something, right? So then difference becomes precisely the condition of the possibility of creativity that you can handle because you have trained yourself in the situation of friendship that sees that difference as a wonderful thing and is happy for it. And so that global pluralism switches from being a problem that's going to get us all killed into a situation that generates creativity. And now we have a different logic of human operation that is not just business logic, but creative logic.